Hello, I'm back, and my hair's crazy. It's growing very fast at the moment. It's like it's got fertilizer in there that's just making it grow at a stupidly fast rate and go crazy. I don't style my hair, it just does what it wants to do, which I suppose I'm okay with most of the time. Anyway, I finally got an aura ring which is exciting because I've thought about getting one for a while, a few, well, at least a couple of years, I think. And I was deliberating about this because of the EMF factor. Um, but I've looked into it and it seems to, in airplane mode, which is what I have it on, it seems to emit just a very small amount of um, electromagnetic mag radiation, which I'm okay with. And I think the main... I think it is a valid concern, but I don't think it's too much of an issue with this, and I think the benefits outweigh any potential negatives of that small emission of electromagnetic radiation. I don't think it's physiologically having too much of an effect. And there are videos on this, um, if you just look up Aura Ring and EMF, you can see that it's likely not really too much of a problem. And I think this can be very useful for um, if you have epilepsy and you're looking at your sleep quality and your heart rate variability and other factors. So say if I have a an increase in seizure activity, like a wild increase, and I keep a diary as well, so I could look at that diary and I could look at when, what time I have the seizure activity. And I could say, okay, what's causing that and what's happening physiologically? And then it helps you to look at trends and to look at possible behaviours or, or environments and looking at the sleep quality and how that could impact on what's happening during the day. So you might be more fatigued in the day and that might be impacting on that or you might be having too much caffeine or some kind of stimulant and that could be affecting your seizure threshold, lowering your seizure threshold. Another thing that appears to be a big trigger for me with my seizure activity is, um, what's the word? It's got an actual word for it. When you have an absence of oxygen, anoxemia, I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah. Anoxemia. So that's when you have less oxygen. It's like the absence of oxygen. Yeah. And, um, in studies, it's been shown that it's particularly um, it has a particular effect on negative effect on incidents of um, what's called petty mal seizures, which are usually the type of absence seizures. But for me, this uh, represents as being when I have these just um, I've forgotten the word as well again. I haven't really forgotten, but it just leaves you when you have to think about it. Um, when I have partial seizures, that's what I was thinking of. When I have these kind of partial seizures, um, where it's just affecting a small area of my brain, and it's just like this annoying little thing. It's not, not anything really serious, but if I was to leave it and just keep exposing myself to that trigger, it would 
get worse and become a more serious type. Um, so, with me, anox anoxemia, that absence of oxygen, would be characteristic of if I'm in a very stuffy room and I'm not getting enough oxygen. As I've pointed out in my blog when I mentioned when I had hyperbaric oxygen therapy, um, we know that, and I highlighted the fact that in um, high oxygen environments, um, under high pressure, you, that, that acts as a convulsant. So you can have seizures in that high, with that high amount of oxidative stress. But at the other end of the scale, when I've been in stuffy rooms, I found that this has triggered seizure activity as well. And in the literature, it shows that, well, with normal, normal air, normal, <laughs> it's different wherever you go, obviously, but in normal air, it's typically around 20% oxygen. Um, but with epilepsy, if that falls to around 8 to 12%, this can trigger these absence seizures. And I would propose that that ratio, that more well, that percentage, that kind of amount of an... Mm of an absence, if you're thinking relatively, would do the same with my kind of epilepsy, my reflex epilepsy, that's localized to that specific area of my brain. And um, it's possibly also why if I talk too much and I don't breathe properly to take in the right amount of the, the oxygen, that I need, um, that can trigger seizure activity too, and I can feel it, I can actually feel it in my head. Same with if I'm doing exercise, I need my breathing rate to compensate, and then I'm fine, but exercise can be a seizure trigger if it's more um, demanding in that respect, if it's more anaerobic. Um, not purely anaerobic, but in that in-between area, anaerobic glycolysis. That's when I struggle. But then if I allow my breathing rate to compensate for that hyperstimulation that is as a result of the anoxemia, then I'm fine. <laughs> it accounts for that. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting, this 8 to 12% figure that I've found in the literature um, and how that appears to correspond to what I seem to experience in stuffy rooms and I can bring that back to normality with breathing exercises and not being in stuffy rooms, having good air quality um, and um, it's been shown that obviously everyone has a seizure, th seizure threshold. I always find that difficult to say for some reason. Everyone has a seizure threshold. So um, it's also been shown in studies that in normal people who have normal seizure thresholds, um, normal healthy people, um, they can have these kind of absence seizures when you have around 7% oxygen in the environment. Um, so low oxygen tension, it's been shown to precipitate seizures, even in people who don't necessarily have these seizure disorders. So that was pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, that's one of my reflex epilepsy triggers.
and uh, so is sleep quality. So this aura ring, it gives me, it breaks down the amount of time I spend in different stages of sleep. And that could be particularly useful for people who have uh, seizure activity in their sleep. Or people who consume lots of caffeine. It can definitely identify if you have issues with that. Um, so yeah, I think um, I've covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, with the ring, I put it in airplane mode most of the time, so I'm not concerned with the EMF, um, which is a relatively very small amount. And um, then it collects all the data when I dock it um, through an attachment that goes into the computer. And that it also charges the ring. It only takes around 30 minutes. And I've only had it on for um, nearly two days now. And it seems pretty good. I think um, it, I appeared to sleep very well last night, apparently, according to the ring. <laughs> I feel like it was fairly accurate because I did feel like I slept quite well. And I feel uh, I've felt quite alert today. Um, I'm still exploring this, so it'll be fun. I'll explore with activity and other things to see um, over the course of a week and longer uh, how life affects me. <laughs> and I think this data is very uh, useful and interesting. Especially when you look at calories and things like that and impacts on just dietary impacts of dietary factors as well as stress and all these other things. Um, so I appear to be doing quite well at the moment. My sleep's been really good just through how I experience things. For a while it wasn't because of just stuff that was happening in my life, but I feel good at the moment. And I have a uh, podcast coming up with Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, which should be good because I have some scientific data to support my anecdote. I don't like just having a story without the science that can back it up. And there is a significant amount of patient-derived data, not just from myself, but from other patients, that uh, I hope to discuss. So that'll be good. And I'm just finishing my thesis at the moment, so hopefully that'll be good too. <laughs> hopefully. And... Um, yeah, I've got lots to look forward to, so I need to make sure I don't stress and take things in my own time. There's something called the Sawyer Effect, which um, is about enjoying work that you do and how that can... Uh... I read about it in a book called Drive, which is about motivation. And um, it's essentially just saying that if you enjoy what you're working on, you can be a lot more motivated and get things done better. So I've been reading about that, the Sawyer effect. Um, and so that's what I try to apply to everything I do. I try to enjoy what I do. Because otherwise, if something's a chore, you don't want to do it. And your motivation just goes down. So, yeah. Lots to look forward to. And I'm doing well, but I need to continue. Not just for myself, but for other people. So I hope to share 
some meaningful information and I look forward to that podcast in May.